Bruce. How are you, man? Um, we've got a little video here for the content on chapter 30. Um, again, I'm sorry, this is, is a bit late. Um, but just kind of want to walk you through some of the uh, some of the charts and then the new um, new grammar for this chapter. Um, so for um, you've got actually four new charts, but they're all um, pretty simple and straightforward. So um, the perfect active subjunctive and the pluperfect active subjunctive. Um, both of these are going to use the third principal part. Okay, um, and third principal parts you'll notice um, almost always end in an I. Okay, so. Um, our old friend Neko Nakari, Nikawi, Nikatum. Um, so what you do is you just chop off that eye, that long eye, all right, and that gives you the the base or stem, okay. Um, and then for the perfect active subjunctive, what you do is you add e r i, okay, and then you add your endings. So you get Neko Werem, Neko Weris, Neko Werit, so on and so forth. Okay, so third principal part, chop off your eye. And then you add the ERI, and then your endings. Okay? Um, and then the pluperfect subjunctive, um, you do the same first step. Um, so the third principal part, chop off your I, you get Nikov. Um, and then for pluperfect, you're going to add ISSE. Okay? So I-S-S-E, Nekowissi. Um, and then you add your endings. So you get Nekowissem, Nekowisses, Nekowisset, and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, and this, the nice thing about these uh, perfect ones is it'll be the same for all verb conjugations, okay? So you just go to that third principal part, regardless of the conjugation, chop off just the I, um, and then you add either E-R-I or I-S-S-E um, for perfect or pluperfect. And then, of course, your endings. All right? Now, uh, the passive is also pretty simple and straightforward, Okay. So what we got here, um, we're just going to switch principal parts. All right, so we're going to use fourth principal part now. Um, and once again, this will be the same for all conjugations. So fourth principal part, so neko, the fourth principal part is nikatum. All right, and you'll remember that fourth principal part can function like an adjective. So um, I put the us, a, um, so depending on if your subject's masculine, feminine, or neuter. So you got nikatu, us, a, um. Um, and then, as a separate word, you're going to add sim, all right? And sim is the present subjunctive of sum, all right? So you get nikatu sim, nikatu sis, nikatu sit, and then the plural, nikati simus, nikati sitis, nikati sint, okay? So you'd use us and e if your subject is masculine, you use a and i if your subject is feminine, and um and a if your subject is neuter. Okay, so fourth principal part, and then sim, sis, sit. All right, and then pluperfect, you're going to start the exact same way, um, nikatus, a, um, and then instead of sim, you're going to add sm. All right, and sm is the imperfect subjunctive of sum. All right, so nikatus, sm, nikatus, ases, nikatus, set. Oops, sorry, I have an extra n in there. There we go. Nikatus, set. Um, and then um, nikati asemus, nikati asetis, nikati ascent. All right, same thing. Us if your us and e if your subject's masculine, a uh, i uh, if it's feminine, and um a uh, if it's neuter. All right, then asem says aset. Okay, so those are your charts. Um, and as I said, they work the same for all conjugations, which is really nice. Um, so just make sure you know how to do the work with those principal parts, though. Okay, that is important. All right. Um, now for the grammar content here, we do have a new subjunctive use, and this one's uh, actually pretty uh, simple, straightforward once again. Um, but it's it's something else to add to your um, grammar repertoire. Uh, so this is called indirect question. Um, this one's a real shocker for the definition. It's a subordinate clause that reports a question indirectly. Hmm. That one's a. Yeah, that one's tough. All right. So, <laughs> tells you a question, uh, and it's just it's not using the exact uh, what the person exactly said. All right. It's reporting it indirectly. Okay. Um, again, it is a subordinate clause, so you, you can't have an indirect question be your main verb. All right, that won't work.
Okay, now how to recognize it? Um, a lot of times your main verb is going to be a head verb, okay? You may remember with indirect statement, we, we had a head verb introducing that, okay? Um, but the thing that's really going to help you with indirect question to recognize it is going to be the presence of a question word, okay? Um, there are quite a few of these. Um, Kur means why, ubi means when or where, qui can mean who, um, and then there are, there are several others as well. You've got Quantus, which is a new one in this chapter. Um, how much? Um, there, there are quite a few as well. Um, nay at the end of the word indicates question. All right. Um, so I just listed a few there for you. But um, you'll have a question word. That's going to be really what kind of um, keys you off to having an indirect question. Okay, um, and then your verb, since it's a new subjunctive use, this is going to be a subjunctive verb. Hey, all right. So, um, main verb is going to be head verb usually. Then you have a question word and then a subjunctive verb. Okay, so that's how you can recognize it. Um, now, when you translate it, um, you don't have to add anything special to your subjunctive verb. Um, you just translate the verb like an indicative. Okay, so a couple examples here. Um, weedy quid hostis fokkerit. So weedy is our head verb, main verb. I saw. Okay. And then the indirect question. I saw what the enemy was doing. Okay. So the direct question would be, what is the enemy doing? All right. But then we put it in indirect. I saw what the enemy was doing. Okay, um, here's another one using a new vocab word, the quantos. Um, I do not know. There's your head verb, nescio. I do not know. Quantos homines. How many men, how many people, the enemy has killed? Okay, so nescio, our head verb, quantos, question word. Nekawerit is our um, subjunctive verb. Okay. And notice here we're translating the subjunctive verbs just like indicatives. We're not adding any special may or might or anything like that. Okay, so that is indirect question. All right, and then there is one other grammar thing um, to be familiar with, um, and this is uh, this is something that Latin authors are very um, careful about following. Um, and you don't have to worry about it too much if you're translating because it'll already be done for you. Um, but if you're putting something into Latin, um, it's very helpful to know. And it's also um, helpful because it, it kind of um, enables you to see how, how the Latin authors are working. Okay, um, And this is something called sequence of tenses. So a sequence is just you know, a pattern or order, um, a way of, um, in which things are done. Um, and the sequence of tenses, there are two of them. There's what's called primary sequence and there's called secondary sequence, okay? Um, and basically, um, how this works is if you have a certain verb in the main clause, um, that's gonna put you in either primary or secondary, okay? So once you're de you've determined that, then in your subordinate clause, you have to have either um, one of these one of these two verbs that you can see here okay so the primary tense uh, tenses um, are going to be present future and future perfect so if you have one of those tenses in your main clause then in your subordinate clause you have to have either a present subjunctive or a perfect subjunctive okay um, and you'll use a present subjunctive for action at the same time Okay, so if it's going on at the same time as the main verb, or time after the main verb. Um, so the reason this does double duty is because there's no future subjunctive. All right, so you'd have to have um, some like future participle or something like that to indicate future. All right, but the present subjunctive, they'll be used same time or time after. Um, and then if you want to use time before the main verb, um, you'll use the perfect subjunctive. Okay, so uh, if you look up at our example here, I do not know how many men the enemy has killed. You'll notice nescio is a present tense verb. Okay, um, and then I've got the perfect tense neca wear it um, for my subordinate clause because it's time before the main verb. All right, 
Um, secondary sequence then works uh, same sort of way, just with the other tenses. So in main clause, you have imperfect, perfect, and pluperfect. Um, so if you have one of those three, that puts you into secondary sequence, or historic uh, is another name for it. All right, you'll notice those are all the past tenses. Okay? Um, and then in your subordinate clause, um, you have to have either the imperfect or the pluperfect. So the imperfect you'll use for action at the same time as the main verb or time after, just like um, up with primary. Um, and then the pluperfect will be used for time before the main verb. Okay, so once again, if we look up at our first example here, I saw, weedy is a perfect tense verb, so that puts us in the secondary sequence, okay? And then fockerit is our subjunctive, that's an imperfect. Um, that means the action is going on at the same time as the main verb, okay? So at the same time that I was, I was watching, I saw, um, the enemy was doing something. So th those two things were going on at the same time. Okay? So that's kind of how a uh, sequence of tenses works. Um, <clears throat> it's very important uh, for, for Latin authors, um, and you'll notice that they, um, they follow it very, very closely. Um, but if you're just translating into English, um, you don't usually have to, have to worry about um, worry about anything because that sequence will already be followed for you. Okay, um, so that's kind of the information for chapter 30. Please let me know if you have any questions on that. Um, and we'll do that vocab quiz on um, Thursday. Uh, and then next week, um, we'll try to have another test. And we'll do a test over 30 and 31 if that works for you. Um, we'll try to have that Thursday. Um, and if you're able, if we can do um, your last vocab quiz for 31, if we can do that on Tuesday, or if Wednesday works better for you, whatever, whatever works, um, just let me know. Because um, next week is going to be, that'll be the last week we'll do, it, we'll do any like tests or quizzes or anything like that. Um, so they, they want the last kind of two weeks of the school year to be... Um, like either review or kind of just light stuff. All right. Um, so vocab quiz this Thursday, and then next week we will do our last test and um, hopefully last vocab quiz as well. So um, hope you're doing well, man. I'll miss you, and I'll uh, talk to you later.